and we're recording. Josh, I appreciate you having you on uh, the Zoom call. Uh, I know we had to rearrange the first time. How is, uh, how is life and how is everything treating you, man? It's all good, man. It's all good. It's strange in this coronavirus times, isn't it, with uh, just lockdown so you can't go out or anything. But yeah, it's all good, man. I'm enjoying like, um, what I'm doing at the minute. So Yeah, no, it's good. I mean, I think... F- I've been, so I live in sort of Manchester most of the time, obviously I don't live too far away from myself and back in sort of Bramwell, it's it's quite nice just to be, able, well, like I said, it's, I think that level of stress that sort of work life gives you, um, just the whole sort of routine and stuff like that, I think that's sort of gone really, which is quite nice to get up in the morning. I mean, you'll know yourself just sort of being your own boss and taking things full time. You can sort of just do things what you, however you want to do them really. Uh, it's, a bit, it's a bit shit not having a gym. Um, yeah. Only so, many press, so, only so many press ups you can do, I guess. Um, I mean, yeah. it, there's, there's certain things you like proper miss, and then others it's good because like you can have a bit of time to reflect and chill out and like focus on what you actually want to, you know, focus on the long term. And exactly, yeah. Think I think there's enough plan. Definitely, I think I've done it. I mean, reading is something which. I mean, you don't you know yourself? It's such an amazing tool to use, and just amazing in terms of what like just sometimes you enjoy it sometimes you can learn a lot from it but I think I've just tried to because when I was in town it was just like it was so like fast paced like work and like gym work gym work gym and it's like I never actually sat down for like an hour every morning just like read read a book yeah. even though I know that like subconsciously like reading is really good for you and it can like allow you to learn new things and all that kind of stuff but it's been really really nice just to sit there have a, have a, have a morning brew a coffee and just read a book which is yeah, nice. seems pretty sad but it is a good time people like realize that slowing down is sometimes would like sometimes going full on too much you can burn out a bit can't you like yeah you can. The gas pedal again well i think everyone's just slow i mean like we talked off camera i mean just like the whole it's affected everyone in some way hasn't it i think whether your business that is doing well or still doing well whatever it is it's the whole supply chain the whole everyone is just naturally slowing down um and, it, and it's yeah it's not great for many people but I guess it's these times, it's just getting back to basics. Do we go and read? Like just going out for a walk, it's like we're only allowed like one or two a day. It's like, it's, it's amazing. It's like getting out in the, in the sun, especially when it's a bit slow. It's a bit gloomy today, actually, but yeah, really it's nice. hard, it? but yeah, it's definitely, it definitely helps getting out of the house. Like being stuck in the house all day, it's a bit, it's a bit harsh on that. Yeah, I think that first week it's like, oh, it's not too bad this, but I think it's like a couple of weeks in, like starting to get like actually probably do we're getting out a bit more to be at her but yeah no but talk to us josh about obviously your journey so there's gonna be a lot of people that will be interested to know obviously a bit more about yourself i mean obviously i've known you for a few years now and followed your journey and that's why i wanted to, to have a chat with you really because i know it's i've seen it sort of well followed you and i know we've spoken a lot and, and trained together a few times but if you want to give sort of a bit of background on yourself what, what you're doing now sort of where you started and uh yeah, just a summary, really, of who you are, really. All right, so, like, well, obviously, with this first, like, Instagram, YouTube thing, I first got into it, when was it now? I think mean, it was 2016, 2017, something like that, three years ago. Um, but the main priority of it then was, like, fitness. So I was a little bit overweight at the start. I thought, I'm going to document the journey and then, um, like, use it as an accountability thing, you know, like, so people are following me, like, I have to, you know, get in shape, like, you know, for them. So I probably lost about 45 pounds, got in, yeah. in the right shape, and it was it was all fitness. Like, I was doing fitness vlogs, fitness, like, Instagram stuff, um, all about the gym, all just, like, trying to motivate people how to lose weight and stuff like that, how to get in shape. And then kind of gradually phased out of that over the past, like, 18 months, I'd say, and I've gone a lot more into fashion now. So... I'd say I'd call myself like a men's fashion blogger and I started my own clothing line um, just because I think that's what I enjoy. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, that's where I saw um, the results coming in terms of views and brand deals and stuff like that. And fitness is, is good. Don't get me wrong. It's a big part of my life still. I still go to the gym all the time when, when we obviously can and yeah. we'll try and stay in shape and stuff like that. But for me, I just thought it was a little bit of a saturated market like fitness and everyone seemed to be just jumping on the bandwagon of fitness. So I thought, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Not a lot of guys are doing it, especially mm-hmm. on YouTube, either, like doing like hauls and how to dress well for your body to type and stuff like that. So I just thought I'd, I'd give it a try and it's doing pretty well, man. Like I'm enjoying it. And some days, obviously, like where you like, oh, feel like um, can't be asked with this, but 
no matter what you're doing, you're going to have those days. So it's good, man. Just got to keep yeah. going. It's good. No, I think I think you hit the nail on the head. I think definitely everyone has those days, don't they? Where it's just like, oh, really yeah. can't pass today. But I think that's just just normal. But it is amazing to see because I remember when I first started, when I first sort of, I've always sort of known who you are and stuff like that. But I think when we first started speaking and stuff, um, it was very sort of fitness related. It was very sort of workouts and stuff like that. But I think in terms of the changes that you've gone through, I mean, obviously with you now becoming more sort of fashion related with sort of the addition of fitness and stuff like that. How has that been from where you were sort of, you mentioned obviously it's been sort of a, a change over 18 months. If you look back 18 months ago, sort of day to day wise, has anything changed? Are you still doing sort of similar things? It's still content game, still strong. Like what sort of changes have you had to make in that sort of transitional period really? Yeah. So in, to be honest, there's not much has changed apart from the content itself. So 18 months to two years ago, I was mainly doing like gym videos or um, all the stuff was like, you know, with my top off, like I just, I couldn't be asked with it anymore. You know what I mean? I felt like, <laughs> I don't know. I just felt like it was a bit of a, what do you call it now? Like a bit of a rat race. Like I had to keep up with it all the time, you know, yeah, like yeah. I had to make sure I was in the best shape possible and get content like that. And I just thought, I did a video. I think this was a turning point. I did a video. I think it was like a, an ASOS try on or something like that. And it, it was like my first video to get over like 20,000 views or something. And I thought, what about if I do another one? I did another one and it got over 20,000 views as well. I was like, this could, I could be onto something here. So I just started like incorporating more fashion into like my vlogs and um, just like trying different clothes and like just basically improving my own fashion game and giving people tips along the way. And it's, it's doing pretty well. Like, there's a um, there's a niche for it, I think on YouTube, especially there's not a lot of guys doing it. So I think well, yeah, there's loads of girls doing it. There's so many girls. So I was just I was kind of watching these girls do it and then kind of basically seeing what they were doing and then incorporate it into like men's if you know what I mean. So more men are coming into like you know like wanting to look good now into fashion and stuff like that. Mm. So yeah, it's good man. Like that. And when that when that change sort of around the eighteen month ago sort of is it something that you had to think quite hard about? Like it's cause obviously I think there's always when you've got to pivot sometimes a business There's that ego element of it. It's like, all oh, right, I've, I've spent so much time, for example, on this idea. I've spent so much time on the, doing the, the fitness related stuff. Was it like, all oh, right, right. When you got that first 20,000 views, was it changed straight away? Or was it like, I think it was kind of gradual, you know, it was like, I think I just wanted to keep holding on to fitness because I enjoyed it so much. And I, obviously watched other fitness vloggers and I was like, oh, that is something I wanted to do. But I think, you know, for the amount of effort you put in and for the return that you get in, I just wasn't really getting much at all. So when I started seeing results from fashion, I thought if I go full in on this now, I can actually make it a full-time thing and I can actually um, do what I've always wanted to do, which is be my own boss. You know what I mean? Be like an entrepreneur, entrepreneur and start my own business and stuff. So, I think it links in well with my business. So I've got a clothing brand and like doing fashion videos and that, like it just helps a lot with my business because most of the stuff is related around my business. And it kind of doesn't look too pushy either because it's about like fashion. I'm not like in the gym and I'm like, oh, go and buy my t-shirt by the way. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. So it kind of links in well. Um, but it's just one of those things. Like I wanted to be fitness, but it just, you have to adapt, don't you, to different circumstances. And I think, I think that's something that you have to, you have to learn over time. Like a lot of mm. people would have just stuck to fitness and you wouldn't have tried something new. Mm. But I, tr I tried it and it, it worked. So you have to be willing that's to try different things. Like that, I think that's been open-minded, isn't it? I think like you said, it's when you've got to pivot sometimes, especially when you've invested time and money and you've built up a, a foundational sort of base of where you want to be, but then taking sort of a, in a different direction can be hard sometimes. I think a lot of people, whether that's in a work job, their career or, doing doing a business like it doesn't mean you can't stop from where you want to be because i think a lot of people have those goals of right they want to live this lifestyle of, of like could be cars it could be on holiday all the time it could be this but i think sometimes if that's the the main goal how, what direction to take do we allow you to get there it shouldn't really matter to be fair i mean of course you've got to do things that you enjoy and stuff like that but i think it's a good lesson to be learned because i think i've had it where i mean sometimes more of an ego thing. I don't want to give give up something because yeah. it's five. If that makes sense, but yeah. it's what it is. I mean, how in terms of uh, it's sulfur, isn't it? With your clothing yeah. brand, how yeah. is that? How is that changed in terms of the content change? Has the sort of clothing had to change as well, or is it something that's again gradually? Yeah, yeah. So at the start, it was more like just for people who go to the gym. So it was mainly like 
clothes for the gym, fitness clothing. I kind of gradually made it into like more of a lifestyle clothing brand. So it's more just like really minimal. Um, so like small logos, nothing too big. But it still fits well, but it's not probably not as tight. Um, but yeah, my whole brand is about comfort and fit. So um, no matter if you're in the gym or if you're just a normal guy, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. And I think they're the people who follow me the most. It's not just like bodybuilder guys or people who are into the gym. It's just like everyday people. So I had to kind of adapt to that as well and just and just make the clothing not as tight because it was probably a bit too tight before. Mm. No, I've, I've got some of the gear in there. Yeah, I've, I'm sure you've seen. Uh, didn't, your, didn't Miles rob it from you? Yeah. <laughs> I've seen him it, you know. <laughs> you got, honestly, because I had it for like literally two, three weeks, and I think he came round one time, and he was like, oh, I could have borrowed top. Not when I was like, yeah, yeah, kind of thing. And he obviously grabbed that. And obviously now I'm in Manchester, and he's obviously back in, back in Bramall still. I was like, every single time I tried to get it, I've missed it, and it's like, it's a nice talk, Joey. You know? I look pretty every decent in the gym. Time, Jim, you know, every time I see him, he's got it on. I was like, I've not seen an order on my website. I, don't, <laughs> yeah. like, I thought it must have been you. He got it from. I mean, to be fair, I've got about well, I've got Ralph Lauren jackets of his and shirts. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll get it back one day. But in terms of like with business, then obviously, how long ago? Have you, I mean, in terms of like making money online, then. So I know you've done it for a while now, but talk to us about like the sort of struggles and everything like that. Cause I'm sure there's obviously a lot of people on your channel as well as mine who are some of the race chores who want to get involved with business. But I think it's that sort of getting, getting started really. So what are sort of the things that you had to do really to, to get it going and sort of what struggles have you had to go through to be honest? Yeah. So for the first two and a half years making content, I've probably been making content now for about three and a half years. For the first two and a half, I didn't make any money like whatsoever. I didn't make, I was probably making like 20 quid on YouTube ads, no brand deals, no, like no sales through my own brand, nothing really. So I was just doing it because I knew something would come of it and because I, I did enjoy making the content, like seeing people's reactions to my videos, like saying that I'm actually helping them. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's quite a nice, satisfying feeling. So I think most people, when they don't see the money coming in straight away, they're just going to all of a sudden, do you know what I mean? Like give up. A lot mm. of people after like one, two videos, they think I'm going to be an overnight success. This video is going to get a million views. I'm going to rack up the dollars and I'm going to, just keep making it, do you know what I mean? But people don't realise that so many people doing it that aren't making any money and it takes a lot of time and like learning the process of like YouTube, Instagram and how brands work and how they want to promote their clothes or their product with you. It's just a bit of a long process really and it takes trial and error. Like I, I probably I've made a lot of videos on YouTube, probably more than most people and I've I've still got a long way to go, do you know what I mean? And, still trying to improve my content over time as well um but it just it just takes a lot of trial and error like it, if you just like not going to give it the time uh, there's no point doing it you've got to be, st- be willing to stick at it because it's like learning to speak in front of the camera it's like a bit of a skill as well not not many people can do it and you've got to try and get your personality across and it's going to be different for everyone as well um so like somebody could like make 10 videos one of them could blow up go viral and then you know what i mean they just keep rolling and rolling but other people it's going to take longer for them because they're maybe a bit more introverted a bit more shy and they don't really know how how to market themselves right so it's just a learning process you've got to be willing to stick at it for, for a bit of time and then when it when you do get that that video and you and you do get a bit of money and a brand like emails you or they want to work with you and you start seeing the subscribers go up and the, the money come in it's you know, it's satisfying because you've put the work in as well. Um, so yeah, really, you just have to be willing to stick at it. That's what that's what most people don't don't do. I've seen so many people over the time. Like when I was at five hundred subscribers, I used to like you know message out people who were similar, and like most of them, like 99 percent of them now, have just like faded away and gone. Do you know what I mean? And, and I just I just kept growing and growing and kept putting in the work. You, you know, with your what yeah. you want, you have to keep putting in the work, man. Yeah, it's it's, it's not. Uh... It's not an easy game, and I think you definitely when you're trying to. Because I have sometimes, how do you market yourself between in the best possible position, really? Because I think if you've you've got to understand what you want to get out of it as well, I mean, because there's and I think definitely the hard work it, it takes. I mean, in terms of like if you look at YouTube, how many subscribers are you up to at the moment? If you're not asking, forty thousand five hundred. I think I just checked it before forty thousand five hundred. Nice. And when we first met, I think I was on four fifty. So it's like yeah, honestly. 
because I remember looking just before this Ashes come on, and it was like, wow, like crazy man. In terms of like YouTube, them specifically, because it's obviously a, a, a tool that I'm sure a lot of vloggers, bloggers, and all that kind of stuff use. What sort of tips would you say to people? I mean, like for example, with me, then because I'm looking now to yeah. get my content game up with property stuff related, but it doesn't matter what industry you're in, but yeah. YouTube as a tool, sort of day-to-day -day things, what things should you be doing and should you not be doing to make it an efficient strategy? All right, so I think YouTube is the massive, I think it's the most, um, I think it's the best platform social media-wise that is going to convert your sales, convert your traffic to your store. But I think the main thing you have to realise is that it's the second largest search um, optimization or search bar in the world behind Google. So wow. people are searching on YouTube all the time. Like say if it's for property, like, I don't know, like how to get a mortgage or something like that, how to, how to save money for your first house. People are searching that all the time. So what you have to realize is if you make content around that is searchable on YouTube, then more than, more than likely it's going gonna, it's gonna to do well. That's what I try and make my videos on. And that's when I started seeing the views go up. So for me, in terms of fashion, I was doing like the best fitting hoodies, the best fitting joggers, the best jeans for men. And people are searching that, do you know what I mean? So, mm. And it comes up in related, related uh, videos as well. Um, it, it doesn't matter how many subscribers you've got either. Like, I helped my dad do a video on his car. And it was, I think he's into his car. So he had a Porsche at the time. I was like, just do a video on it. I think a lot of people can uh, relate to this. So he did it. And I, and I optimized the search for him now. And it was, this was about 18 months ago. It's like 25,000 views now. And he's only, uploaded one, he's only uploaded one video. He's not got any subscribers. So that, isn't that big Chris? Yeah. If he just kept uploading every, every week, he'd, he'd be bigger than me now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because people, people love cars. I bet people love property as well. It's yeah, like exactly. A big, a big market. So you've got to search, find people that you want to be like and then see what videos they're making and what's doing well. And then try and make videos around them, and but but be unique. Like, don't just copy them out, right? You know what I mean? Like, mm. and if you see someone do a do a video that does really well, let's say get some over a million views, it doesn't necessarily mean if you make the same video, it's going to do the same. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. a lot of trial and error. Like, your content will be slightly different, and it's going to vary, and um, mm. just because everyone's different, aren't they? So, mm. sure. it's just consistency, isn't it? It is, it is. I mean, and in, in terms of like sort of future plans, like with the YouTube, with the brand, sort of stuff like where, so where, where you sort of at the moment, where do you see it in the next couple of years, really? So um, I want to just keep trying to grow on YouTube because I think it's a, it's a big platform and there's a lot of room to grow still. Um, so I'm just, just trying to improve my content game, trying to think of new ideas, um, just trying to make different content. I think. One thing with me is I, I prop all of my cars as well. So I think I'm going to try and people always ask me, I've done a few videos on cars and they always ask me to do more on that. So I'm going to try and incorporate that into my content as well as fashion. Um, just because like I enjoy it and I enjoy making that sort of videos and it comes across, when you, it comes across through the camera as well. So people see that you're being genuine. Do you know what I mean? Um, mm. So over the next two years, I want to try and try and have over a hundred thousand subscribers. Um, just try and grow my brand through that, through loyal followers, fans, and then um, see where it goes from there. Really, sure. And you're a you're a full time full time influencer at the moment. I would yeah, you say it's a lovely word, that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a full time a content that? creator. Content creator. Content creator. That's it. I mean, what, yeah. So content creator is what you like to be known as. That's what I like. Yeah, influencer is just a bit over overused, isn't it? I'm not oh, like yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo, am I? Yeah, there's levels, isn't there, I guess, to the game. Levels, man. Ronaldo. Yeah, what a game. I went full time in January this year, so not that long, but yeah. I get in terms of obviously that because uh, was it the, did you work part time prior to that? Was it? That yeah, you... I was working um, just in a restaurant. I was doing like thirty hour weeks in a restaurant as a manager there, and I was doing this alongside it. But I was pretty flexible with the hours, so I could I was able to like, you know wake up early in the morning, film a video, and then edit it at night and stuff like that and yeah if you actually want to do something you'll make the time for it do you know what i mean yeah, exactly you just need to sleep less and watch netflix less well this is what i'm saying it's just people always like they come to me and like what well, like how you find the time well, it's like well you just made the time it's like do you mean it's if you go to bed early enough do you mean yes obviously some people may need a little bit longer sleep which is fine but 
if you actually look break and I always say to like what how do you sort of like look at that and like it's just just break down your day write everything down on, on a piece of paper what you do that day it can be like grabbing lunch it can be going I don't know an extra 10 minutes on the toilet whatever it is and it's just like you work out you have to be very specific of how you're going to manage your time yeah, exactly. you, you said, there's so many people are so so surprised at how much time they've got available especially like with everything that's going on now with the virus and stuff mm-hmm. like that I think if you're not making use of this time and using it to your advantage then you're just just wasting it away aren't you really so many people waste time that's that's one of the biggest things right. I realized. I think now because I'm full time as well I probably will you know do do a few more like things like watch Netflix or sometimes put on Xbox like a little bit more just because I know like I'm my own boss you know what I mean but yeah, exactly when I had my my full time job and I was I wasn't like doing it I wasn't hardly watching TV I wasn't doing anything like that I was because I knew that like to get it to where it is now I, ha- I had to just put in the work and you have to you're wasting time like scrolling Instagram it's you Crazy, could it? posting on Instagram instead of making money do you know what I mean you could just just flip the coin um but you, you you you're your own boss now so do you mean doing the things that you want you create that time for yourself do you mean like I mean, in terms of like going back to your content then because like producing content and editing it and scheduling it all is yeah. the job in itself um uh, how do you using like any tools to, like schedule content because i know you can like diff- do different platforms and stuff or is it just you post all the time at the same time and you just got a bit of a routine going so uh, my schedule is always tuesday thursday sunday um for my videos and then on instagram i'll probably i try and post every day but sometimes it's five or six days a week it just now I'm full time. I am posting literally every day, but before I was probably posting like five, six times. Um, but on YouTube, I'll try and like film videos in advance because mine aren't vlogs. So, well, sometimes they're vlogs, but they're not vlogs. So it's not like it has to be up, you know, the next day. Or yeah, yeah. I can actually do it in advance. So I think like three weeks, I had about six videos all lined up, all scheduled. Nice. So I could just literally chill if I wanted to. But I was already, I was still making extra content. You know, there's always extra content you can be making. Um, but you can just schedule it in the YouTube app and on YouTube itself. So you could just make a video, say, say now you could schedule this video to go up in like two weeks time at a certain mm. time and a date. And then you could be in a different country and it's, it's live. Do you know what I mean? So mm. that's one thing that's pretty good. It's, it's a proper flexible thing to do. For sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, it's a, I'd love to be able to do a bit of a Gary V every day vlog and all that kind oh, of stuff. You say, couldn't it? He's just next level. But I guess he's got the whole team in place and he's got all the marketing team. Yeah, how many staff he's got that are working for him? Like, so about 20 people just on his social media account. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Like, was it Team Gary or something like that? It's yeah. Like, free up. I remember when I went to see him in, um, in London and it was just like, there was like three or four camera guys and just from just for him, from his side. Like, it was like, obviously, because he got D-Rock, isn't it? I don't know if he's still working for him. Yeah. D-Rock was his main guy, but even though there's like another couple of guys and like just crazy, but I guess that's why he is what he is today. Um, yeah, definitely. If I, the thing is I like creating content, you know, so I like like the stuff with the cameras and yeah. lighting and stuff like that. So it, if I was vlogging, it would be nice to have someone there, you know, filming you all the time. Mm. I actually like that, that side, that aspect to it, especially for you. It'd be good to like get an apprentice on and just follow you about for a day. Or, well, this I is mean, what I'm saying. Cause I mean, I was th- I've been thinking that cause I've like, traveled to like, Hong Kong and Qatar and Singapore and there's some cool places and it's like I mean there's definitely um, people are interested in that you know yourself like it's what people do, holidays nice hotels cars and all that kind of stuff so it's just going with what people want to see really isn't it yeah no exactly in terms of like people who started to like produce a bit of content now like for example who are on found subscribers or slightly less or slightly more what I mean outside of consistency What's something like, I mean, one or two things that you would advise them do every single day? Um, is it just make sure you do it doing, like I said, consistency with the vlog every day? Or is it, I don't know, what do you mean? Is it connect with different influences or what is it? I think research is the biggest thing that people should be doing. So if you're just starting a vlog, it's it's really hard to grow a vlog. Unless you, have you heard of Casey Neistat? Like, yeah, yeah. his style is just just amazing. So unless you like amazing at editing amazing at filming and, and you've got such an exciting life it's going to be very hard for you to grow a vlog yeah if you research youtube like on a topic you want to talk about so say i don't know say if you want to talk about golf and it's just all golf you could type in like how to hit a driver 
do a video on that, how to hit your irons, how to put, do you know what I mean? There's so many different videos you can do. You just need to make sure you're doing your research on YouTube, the platform itself, and see what other creators are doing. And then just just try different videos and like over time it, it will come and you can like there's a there's an app called VidXQ or something like that and it's like you add it into your browser and then you can see all the videos on how they're they're doing so like the, if the title's too long or too short or mm-hmm. if they're using the right keywords and and stuff like that and hashtags and stuff so you just I'll need to it. send me that I'll add that into the uh, the sort of the notes on YouTube after in, in terms of like who inspires you then because yeah. the, the, the people that I'm for sure you follow I mean has the people that have motivated you slightly changed over the last 18 months or is it sort of been always the same people still that you follow and watch um, yeah probably not watching as much fitness stuff now to be honest I used to watch a lot of fitness like Christian Guzman you've heard of him haven't you yeah amazing but I still watch him now and his story cool, cool he's, a, he's a cool guy man um he is a cool guy. Well, yeah, it's probably more a few a few more fashion people now to me. It's like teaching men's fashion. He's he's doing well. Um, similar to me, but he's a bit more like I show quite a bit of my life as well. He'll just show he'll just do like videos, you know, tips and stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah mainly people on YouTube and obviously like people on other levels, you know what I mean? Like Cristiano Ronaldo. What a guy. His mindset is just Conor McGregor as well. The love of notorious. Yeah. He's, uh, those, those two guys, I mean, I don't want to say, I probably won't say it actually because it sounds a bit weird actually, but. Just the say just, the homo after it. <laughs> 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 but th- those guys are just amazing. Like, just yeah, yeah. the whole mentalities they're in. And it, do you know what I find really cool with Ronaldo? Um, how he just used to like be in Bramall, like back in the day when he used to play United, he used to be, and I used to go to the gym, Total Fitness. I always used to see his Ferrari outside, Bramall Piccolino. So it's just like, this guy's like, well, like, one of the best, if not the best ever. Yeah. And he's just being in Bramall, like chilling. He's the uh, best guy in the world, isn't he? Like on Instagram, I think he's got yeah, a yeah. followers. And what a guy, he's just got his hotels, he's got his underwear brand, all his aftershaves and... yeah. He's just ticks all the boxes, but it just shows that consistency and the sacrifices that he's had to make. Yeah. I mean, there's a story. I mean, you've seen obviously the interview of Piers Morgan. Yeah, yeah. It was just so fascinating to say when he had his like best like time outside of like just in his world was when he went to. I don't know if you remember when he said about going to was it in Madrid on New Year's Eve where he went to like a bar for two hours. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah. And he pretended like it was just quite fascinating. Like, and it, I think just the whole sacrifice and the whole mentality has gone has to gone has to go through. But in terms of like day to day routines, then so something that I always try and ask, whether it's property related conversations or whether it's a conversation with someone like yourself, is a coffee and a quote that you live by every single day. Now I know you look, at, you know, I always see you having a coffee, and I always, <laughs> I always see you reading the the daily quote book. I think it is that you look at and you put on your Insta. One key, if you could have one key coffee and one quote that you could live by every single day, what would that be? What sort of different coffee? Yeah, like if you so I have an espresso machine. I think it's the purple one. I don't know what, what that one's bloody called. Yeah. Um just a double shot espresso, that's why I have black. Just that's it. That's it, mate. Yeah. A little bit of sweetener, like just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and then quote, I'd have to go for like ambition is priceless. That's the one I'd go for because I think like if you don't have any ambition, if you don't have any dreams, any goals, you're not gonna reach your targets your your dreams are you so you need to before you even start anything you need to actually have a goal and an ambition and that that's what's going to get you out of bed in the morning to do what you want to do and to achieve that you know keep going on a daily basis so mm-hmm. that'd be mine well love it yeah no it's like, i'm always fascinated to see what sort of people like what they drink and some people like you know two shots of caramel syrup with it in a latte i'm like hang on mate but, <laughs> Straight black, love it. In terms of like where people can like find you and sort of like in terms of like Insta and YouTube, I know I'll put all like the notes and everything on the um, on the show notes. What where's where can people find you best? Is it YouTube, Insta, or both? Just just both. It's just Josh Sullivan on YouTube and then Josh Sull underscore on Instagram. Someone had already taken my name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good man, good man. And um, yeah, no, I think that, I think we've covered quite a bit. To be fair. Um, but no, yeah, I appreciate 
appreciate you having uh, having you on. I'm sure we'll do it again. Um, I think what would be good to like, I think what I want to try and do with this is get as, give people like an overview of who you are. And then I think if we can get specific or maybe like in a few weeks time or whatever suits best. And, you know, obviously some of the questions like related to what you do, it's like sort of key tips being like a content creator or like stuff like that. And it's in sort of day-to-day stuff. So more practical stuff. Um, but yeah, no, I guess it's, um, it's been a pleasure and I'm, uh, I'm sure we'll definitely have you, have you on again. Yeah, definitely, man. Nice one for having me. And let me know as well. I'll share it on my story. Yeah, yeah definitely. I'll, I'll share it. I'll get it all sorted for you. And then, um, yeah, let me know when you're up for a social distancing walk as well. Yeah, man, definitely. Give us a shout. <laughs> Top man, Joshua. Like I said, you have a good day, mate. And we'll, uh, I'll send it all over to you once we're all sorted, yeah? You too, man. Take, Take care. Easy, man. Have a good one. Yeah. Take care. Okay.